So thanks again, Ben, and thanks thanks to everyone for joining us. Um, you know, I thought we had a really productive first week of uh, spring ball. You know, the first two days, obviously we weren't in pads, but I thought the, pra the practices uh, were at the type of pace and, and kind of tempo that, that I thought we needed to have uh, for the first couple of days, which means our players have really uh, put in a lot of work on their own with the installs as we as we start. You know, Saturday we were able to finally get in the shoulder pads and, and do some thudding, uh, which we're allowed to do. And, and again, I thought we, we had another pretty good first day in pads, which now leads us to today where we're in full gear. You know, overall, I'm pleased with where we are this early in spring, uh, which is atypical, you know, when you're in year three of, of your program. I feel like the guys have really locked in and we have great competition throughout our team and the different position groups, but still realize at the same time that there's still so much work to be done uh, for us as we continue to work toward uh, being the type of team that we envision us being. Um, we'll be in pads uh, three days this week as we always, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, uh, and we need to keep our focus and improve with each, each and every practice as we, we talk to our team about that. And uh, I guess with that, I'll open it up to any questions that you guys may have. All right, we'll start with Alex Flum today. Alex? Hey, Coach Locks. I hope everything's going well with you. Um, you know, I know this last season was very unique and very different from any other season you would have. Is this spring se season kind of different than usual? Is, is it like a continuation of, you know, you guys getting more used to each other? I know there's different coaching staff and different players in here to some degree, but is this kind of more getting you guys acclimated to each other and helping you to be even more prepared for this fall? Yeah, you know, it really isn't. It's, it's really, you know, because of the transition of the coaches that we've been able to bring in, uh, the familiarity with the systems and, and what we do and how we do it, that part of getting to know each other hasn't, uh, hasn't been kind of the focus point for us. Uh, I think right now the focus point is with this young team we have is ensuring that these installations, you know, we've got probably six to seven really big installations, which, uh, you know, equal what we do and who we are on offense, defense, and special teams. And, you know, during the spring, the, co the goal for us is to make sure we get all this stuff installed and on tape and then see which of our players uh, execute the stuff the best and start identifying leaders and playmakers. And, and that's kind of what we're, how we've kind of set spring up. Um, I can tell you that the enthusiasm for being out on the field uh, was displayed in the first three practices. You know, obviously when something's taken away from you, uh, like last spring, not being able to go through a spring ball and then being limited with the number of uh, games we play, uh, I think you can see that our players are excited to be back out on the grass and having this opportunity. And, uh, you know, I know there hasn't been, uh, you know, a, a ton of contact and things like that, but has there been anyone that so far as, you know, in what you've seen jumped out a, a youngster you know that that you're like man this guy's making a mark already i know it's probably hard to yeah the old who stands out in the first two three practices in, in shorts and t-shirts shoot I, I could stand out in shorts and t-shirts right now but no I, i'm real happy with the way that i think um as a whole the the, the work that they have put in on their own because we're limited with the amount of time we can spend with them in the off season outside of our uh, off-season conditioning program, but I think just having, you know, a few quarterbacks uh, in, in Leah and Eric Nigerian, as well as David Faust, who've been in the system and know it, being able to grab players and go out and do things on their own, you can really tell um, offensively, defensively, our kickers and punters, that they've really, really put the time in on their own, which allows us to get off to a fast start, like, we're, like we've been able to do the first three practices. Thank you. Yep. We'll go to Pete Gilbert. Hey, Coach, great to see you. I was going into last baseball season, uh, asked uh, Orioles general manager Mike Elias about, you know, and when it comes to evaluation and it's only 60 games, do you, do you then, are you concerned that you maybe put too much stock in what you see? Well, I, I want to ask you that too. You had a short season and, you know, how much, and it's different sports, but I guess similar in terms of evaluation, do you, are you concerned you maybe because in the five games you saw something that, you know, it maybe it wasn't real or wasn't enough or do you, or do you have to hold back on your, how much weight you put into that evaluation? And if you could apply that specifically to Talia, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. I think first and foremost, that what, what we've learned and what I've learned, you know, leading programs is what's happened last year 
uh, when the new season starts, which we turned the page on and, and, and when they got back here from uh, winter break, is that, you know, what they did last year really doesn't matter. And it's a matter to us uh, how, how we progress. And, you know, what I've seen in our off-season conditioning, uh, where we develop the mental and physical toughness and the callous, callousness that we're going to need to get through a tough Big Ten season, as well as our uh, non-conference opponents. I've really been pleased with where we are from that standpoint. I think what you're asking in terms of Talia and his development, uh, you know, in the system, you know, that's what this spring is for, for us is to see just in 15 practices, we're, we're installing uh, just like we did going into the season. I think you can see that there's a, a great understanding of what we do and why we do it. Uh, I think Dan's done a great job uh, with Talia in terms of, you know, giving him the 3,500 foot view of, of what we are on offense, the big picture part of it. And then as we continue to develop his skill within the offensive system, I've been pleased with it. And he's made the, uh, the, the, the next step in the progression, as you would expect, the second year quarterback. Um, last year, obviously, it was his first year as a starter. Uh, at the college level, and, and I thought he did some good things, uh, but also some things that we, we need to get corrected, and that's what we plan on using this spring uh, to do and, and continue to build up as we uh, lead into our 2021 season. And if I could follow up just a minute about as far as how do you gauge chemistry at this point and with he, Talia and receivers? You know, I mean, is, again, can you put much stock in what you've seen? Again, it's shorts and, you know, shirts, but, you know, that – can you sense, can see, can, do you have an eye for, you know, okay, I see that is changing and evolving and developing? I mean, that's the one thing you can see in, in, in socks and shorts and T-shirts is, is the timing between the receivers. And that's where, I, as I alluded to in my opening statement, uh, you know, the work that these guys have done on their own, and that's what having a, a veteran or returning starter uh, in your system allows you to do, because I know Leah spent a lot of time with his receivers uh, both individually and collectively, as well as Eric Nigerian and, and David uh, Faust, all three of those guys, I mean, have spent quite a bit of time this offseason throwing, developing the timing, the trust. And, you know, fortunately for us, our receiver room is still one of the, the better rooms on, in our program because of the veterans that we have there with a, a healthy Jay Sean Jones, a Dante Demas, a Brian Cobbs, a year older Rakim Jarrett. Uh, and all Daryl Jones, you know, we have a host of guys in that receiver room and then having Chig back as a tight end really w w has made it an easier progression for Leah and that timing and development that you want to see out of the group. We'll go to Emily next. Hey, Mike, um, I have two because it looks like I'll take the injury one. Um, Terrence Lewis and, and then are there any other people who are out for the spring? Um, yeah, you know, with Terrence uh, came in with a pre-existing injury, you know, one of the negatives, obviously, of COVID is, you know, some of our guys that we signed were unable to come up for official visits where we're normally able to, to do physicals. And in his entry physical, you know, here's a guy that he played a whole season of high school football on the torn ACL. Um, and, you know, we were fortunate enough to catch it, our doctors did, and, and so we repaired it, and, and obviously he's out for the spring. Um, you know, we have a few other players that, and they're not out, but they're out of not non-contact type spring practices. Uh, you know, Chami's one of the guys, you know, obviously coming back off of the knee and, you know, he, he will probably not go through spring, uh, spring ball. Uh, we've got a bunch of guys in, in gold jerseys, which are the non-contact jerseys from off season surgeries. But uh, for the most part, I feel like we're pretty healthy. Um, we're fortunate enough to catch the, the pre-existing injury with T2 and, or Terrence and, and get it get it fixed, but it just kind of goes to show you the type of kid he is that he played a whole season up and through a state championship run uh, on a torn ACL and, and we got it fixed and it's unfortunate, but it gives us a chance to get him healthy. And when was that surgery? Was it? Sometime in January, maybe. Okay, in okay. January when we got back. Um, and then my, my actual question is just, um, how, how different do you think the tight ends room? You mentioned Chig there, but how helpful will that be this year with those two good freshmen or two and Chig? Well, I can tell you, you know, last year not having Chig and then playing basically, you know, we had Malik Jackson and we had to move over Tyler Baylor, who's returned back to the defensive side of the ball. Um, we were very limited with the tight end position, which has always played a major role um, in, in our offensive scheme. And so, having Chig back and then Malik Jackson back, 
as well as both the freshman tight ends that we signed and and you know we moved Justin Brown, a receiver, uh, over to tight end, uh, as well as Cam Blunt, who also was a linebacker that we moved over to tight end. We've added uh, depth into the tight end room, which allows us to give have be a little more versatile in our personnel groupings. Uh, so it, it's great one to have Chig back, uh, and, and he's looked good in his return. Of uh, added some weight, some strength, some size, but also still uh, flexible and diverse enough to, to to slide out and do a lot of different things. But I've also been pleased with uh, both C.J. Dupree and Weston Wolf, uh, and both how they've come in and really athletic guys and have picked things up, and they've been able to uh, kind of assimilate uh, in, in, a, in a pretty easy transition. Uh, and, and so that's been good to see, and it's helped helped us with that that room quite a bit. We'll go to Scott Abraham next. Locks is always good to see you. Uh, is there a balance yeah. of finding, uh, you know, promoting competition within the team during these practices, but also having these players learn the install? Is there a balance there? Yeah, I think learning the install starts first. You know, one of the things that we've uh, done since I've been here is to, to teach concepts and not plays. I think it's really important that, and when I keep talking about that big picture view, uh, even with Leah, you know, Leah knew the plays. Leah understood it because a lot of it were things that he did as his uh, first year there at Alabama before transferring up. And so now, you know, anytime, and what I've learned with, uh, you know, this, this group of uh, players that we're coaching now is when they know the why, it seems to stick a little better in them being able to uh, understand. And so we spent a lot of time in the offseason answering the why and doing spring ball as we put in these concepts and we install our systems offensively, defensively, and special teams, you know, we, we try to not get caught up in learning, hey, I'm an X receiver and on this play, I do this. We, we'd rather say, hey, you know, I, I play X and this play and this concept is, is, are these routes together. And then we're able to move guys anywhere in the formation uh, because we're really big on touches and trying to make sure our best players get the ball, touch the ball. And I think the more they know conceptually, the easier it is to implement them in our system to ensure that our best players are getting the ball at the best possible positions. And Locks, you're well aware of what a challenging year this has been for a lot of people, but it seems like things are starting to open up, especially at the University of Maryland, announcing yesterday that some fans will be going to certain sporting events. Still unclear yet with the spring game, but it's looking positive that you might have some fans for that spring game. How excited would you be to see fans in the stands finally at last at a Maryland spring game? Yeah, you know, it would be great to, to, to be able to really have our fans out and hopefully – much like our players and the enthusiasm they've shown to be able to go out and practice after all we've been through during the pandemic and, and missing this opportunity last year. I'm hoping that it galvanizes Turk Nation and we get uh, our fans out to see our, see our young team and, and the progress that, that we're making. Obviously, we, you know, the spring game is the culmination of spring football and we still got a lot of work to do, but it sure would be great to see our fans return to Maryland Stadium. Uh, it starts with our other sports first, you know, both our lacrosse teams and all of our other fall sports that have been pushed to uh, the spring, uh, being able to get the Turp Nation back out and around our players and, and, and all the different sports uh, would be very welcome for all of us because again, you know, having those fans at the games and in the stadium really helps push our players uh, to play at a high level. and. We got great fans, and, I, and I'm sure they'll be out there to support us when they're able to be. Thanks, Lox. Yep. We'll go to Thomas Kenziora. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jalen Duncan hey. is one of those guys that's quickly becoming a veteran uh, on the offensive line that's, that's had some turnover, obviously a new position coach. Uh, just what have you seen uh, in, from, from Jalen, his development over the last year or so, and then particularly where is he at right now? Yeah, you know, I thought our own line, and I've said this before on record, on the record, that I felt like our own line was probably the mo mo most improved position group on our team uh, from my year one to year two. And even though year two is a small sample size of it, but the the, the jump that Jalen made from his red shirt freshman year to his red shirt sophomore year uh, was phenomenal. And, and you can see the work was put in. Um, you can tell that he really had a good understanding of the, the fundamentals of playing that position. You know, he's still a guy that is fairly new to the game of football, started playing it late, 
um, and, and still, you know, from a natural skill set, probably one of the more talented offensive tackles I've had a chance to be around. And with each and every practice and each and every game, he continues to improve. And so my expectation and, you know, Coach Braswell, who even though he's new uh, to you guys, was around here last year as an analyst, an off the field analyst that really has a good grasp and good knowledge of the group. Um, I expect to see Jalen take another huge step uh, from year two to year three. And, and, and because of the type of talent he has, uh, I think he'll get better with each year in every game. We'll go to Wes Brown. Hey, Coach. Um, sort of building off of, off of Emily's question, um, you, you, you've you obviously been working on trying to build the, the tight end room here and try and get that position a little bit more involved. Last year was obviously difficult with the, the injuries and all that stuff, but how important is you know the tight end position in your offense, and what are you kind of looking for in that next step this season with all those healthy pieces back? Yeah, you know, this question always gets asked of offensive coordinators and about the tight end. And, and I love the tight end just like you guys do. And I think, you know, the tight end and the running back, whether you look at the top offenses in the NFL or in college, you know, I think of the New Orleans Saints and, and you think of uh, the Bucks and, and what Brady did with the Bucks and even up in uh, New England, which, you know, uh, uh, our passing attack is based off of a lot of the concepts that, that were run up in New England. Um, obviously, Brian Dable brought some of these concepts down to Bama and, and, and we brought them up to here. But the tight ends always played an integral role because he's the guy that creates the matchup issues because teams have to decide whether they're going to put a linebacker on your tight end or bring a safety in the game to cover them. And, and, and you know, to have the versatility of a guy like Chig back where he has the ability to line up in line and block in the run game while also uh, being athletic and, and, and gifted enough to displace and, and, and create matchup issues, you know, it's always great to have that in that room. And we've recruited to that position because it was an important position for us, uh, you know, with obviously bringing in CJ and, and, and Weston. And then also, you know, we have Laurent Husbands who we sign uh, here locally coming in at that position. We feel like we've been able to build the depth there and now recreate competition. But the tight end position is definitely one of those that gives you some advantages if, in fact, the skill set of the tight end uh, is able to take advantage of his matchups.